Hi, this is Steve from Pixelbump.com, and welcome to this week's tutorial on raw image workflows. We've talked a ton about how to process an image once you have it, but we've really talked very little about how to get a good image. And one way to do it very inexpensively is shooting raw video on a DSLR. A lot of us have DSLRs. A lot of us use them to shoot video, either for our own projects or for clients. And for motion graphics and VFX work, the DSLR image has always been a little lacking. It's a very compressed image, and it doesn't give you a lot of room for color correction or a lot of forgiveness when you're trying to key an image on a green screen. A wonderful way to get around that is to be able to shoot raw video. And raw video means that you are getting an uncompressed video image. You're getting the full amount of data. It's one of the reasons people love shooting with a red camera or on film. You're just getting more data to work with. Now, if you own a Canon camera, there's a wonderful way to do this called the Magic Lantern. And it is a firmware that sits on your camera. It does not overwrite the original firmware that Canon gave you. It just sits on your CF card and it gives you amazing enhanced functionality from small things like overlays and exposure settings to what I think is the biggest one, the ability to record 14-bit uncompressed RAW straight to your card. I haven't been too welcoming of this in the past because their RAW format was great, but it didn't allow you to record sound. And I like to record sound into the camera, even if I'm running something like a boom mic into a separate recorder, just so I can sync things easier later. And that's a big part of the workflow that I like. And I didn't want to have to go back to more film style shooting. But Magic Lantern has come out with a second version of their RAW called MLV RAW. And MLV RAW does allow you to record sound. So once that became available, I went back to Magic Lantern, installed it on my camera, and have been using it ever since. And I want to talk to you a little bit about what a wonderful image acquisition format this is and how much it's gonna improve the quality of your images, either for, again, your own projects, projects for clients, or your own visual effects work. By giving you cleaner images to work with, rotoscoping, color grading, keying, they all become much easier. So to get the Magic Lantern software, you need to go to their website, magiclantern.fm. You go to the download section, you grab the most recent build that is for your camera. In my case, it was for the 5D Mark III. Their forum has a great community of people sharing information. So if you need camera specific help, if you need installation help, if you need to ask anybody a question, there's a great community here that you can do that with. Now, the one caveat is once you've got the Magic Lantern software on your camera, you're going to need to make sure you have cards fast enough to read and write the raw data. I recommend getting a 1000X card. These are a little more expensive, but if you bought your camera in the last couple of years, you probably bought these types of cards already. Now the RAW files are gonna take up a lot more space. Here are a bunch of test shots I did the other night, and you can see they're very large files, two, three gigs easily for you know, 10, 15 second clips. On a 32 gig card, you'll get about five minutes of footage. On a 64 gig card, you'll get about 10 minutes of footage. And on a 128, you'll get about 25 minutes of footage. And then if you have money to burn, that 256 is gonna give you a good hour of raw data on your card. Now, when I started, I found that there was a lot of information about how to do your post-production workflow. And it involved recording to the card, converting your images to DNG files, bringing them into Resolve, making proxies, and then bringing them back to Premiere, editing with your proxies, then taking it back to Resolve to do your color grading and swapping them out in the old online offline process. And that was not something I was interested in. One thing I really love about shooting on a DSLR is you can bring it into your nonlinear editor, in my case, Premiere, do your edit, send it to After Effects, do your VFX, bring it into speed grade, do your color, and you're just working with that one set of media the whole time. I didn't want to lose that workflow. And I found you don't actually have to. There's a very simple workflow that is going to make working with raw files just about as painless as working with the native DSLR QuickTimes. And you get that by using this piece of software called the ML Raw Viewer. And the ML Raw Viewer is something you're going to want anyway because it allows you to preview 
your raw files. So if I come over here and I look at one of these files off of my card, and we'll just open up one here, we can go ahead and just play through it in real time, just watching the raw data. And this also gives us the ability to convert our files to either a ProRes 4444 or to a DNG sequence. I've made a little flowchart here to help keep this very simple. So once you've recorded and transferred your files, you open it up in the ML Raw Viewer, and then you've got some choices to make, which you can see here. And the choices are what kind of color space you want to work in. So you can kind of click through and see which one looks best to you. I think sRGB looks pretty good, Rec. 709 looks pretty good, but my favorite is C-Log. I think that one gives us kind of the best looking image overall. The next thing you want to take a look at is the quality of debayering. All you need to do is click it so that this is a straight line. That'll give you the highest quality image. The last thing you want to do is check here to see do you want a QuickTime movie or do you want a DNG sequence? If you're not looking to get every last pixel of color data, go ahead and use QuickTime 4444. It's a great high quality format and it's going to serve you really well. But if you want every last bit of data, you're going to want to use DNG. To export your files, you can press E and render this one clip if that's all you need, or if you have everything in a directory already, and I've got some transferred here to my hard drive, these five, what I can do is open the first one here in the viewer, go ahead, make sure everything looks okay. We'll do our settings. Like I said, I like C-Log, but use the one that works best for you. I'll make sure my debayering is good. I'm gonna keep it at a DNG. And if I wanna go ahead and process the one, I press E. But if I wanna process everything that's in that folder, all five of these clips, I can go ahead, press the C key, and you'll see it loads up a batch render. Now, once that batch render is done, you can go ahead and bring those files into Premiere. So I'm gonna go ahead, let these finish, and then we'll go ahead and import some files. All right, so here we are in Premiere. All of our files have finished processing. Now we need to bring them in. And unfortunately, if you're using DNG image sequences, you can't just drag and drop entire folders. It will try to import each image as a separate file, which isn't what we want. So what we'll need to do is use the media browser. You go ahead, come down and navigate to your footage. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to my video folder. I'm going to go down to my raw workflow. And here we have all of my files. And I'm going to go ahead, give myself a little more room here. And I'm just going to right click and click import. And it's going to come in. And you just need to do this for each one. I'm going to bring it into my timeline. Let's go ahead and find a good endpoint there. Find a good out point. And there you go. You got full res DNG raw files playing right natively in your timeline in Premiere. At this point, you can do whatever editing you want, send it over for color correction or to After Effects. I've got a few cuts here in speed grade, and I just want to show you kind of the color latitude that you're getting back with these raw files. So I'm going to go ahead and bring over my shadows and looking at the scopes here, we can see we've got very compressed data right now because of the way the scene was when it was shot. So I'm gonna go ahead, bring down my shadows just a little bit until they're crunching down to just about the zero. I'm gonna come over to my midtones. I'm gonna bring those way up. And I'm gonna go ahead and probably try to pull those highlights down maybe just a little bit. Oh no. Actually, I'm going to push those up a little. You can see they did have some room. There's some that are clipped and they're not going to become unclipped. But by stretching out the contrast like that, you can see how much more information we already had in that image. And I can come in, start changing saturation levels. I can go ahead and do color offsets. You know, whatever you want to do to color grade the image, you can do very quickly, very easily. And it's because there's so much color data in these raw files. 
We can go ahead and send that back to Premiere or we can send it to After Effects. Whatever your regular workflow is, just keep working that exact same way. You're just working with much higher resolution files. So we've seen how to bring our footage into Premiere. We've seen how we can edit it. We've seen how we can bring it over to speed grade for color correction. The last and probably most important thing that you guys care about is bringing it into After Effects. And if I go ahead and pull in, let's grab one of the green screenshots. And when you bring it in, just like if you were bringing in a raw image to Photoshop, it's gonna ask you if you wanna change any of the color settings. I'm just gonna go ahead and let it be exactly as it was shot. And I'm gonna make a new composition. Now, one of the biggest issues with keying is, is dealing with curly hair. You can see there's just a lot of stuff going on. And for regular keying, especially with a DSLR, this would be a nightmare. But again, because we've got every pixel of data using these DNGs, I'm just gonna go ahead, bring in key light. I'm gonna drop it on my footage and I'm gonna bring in a zoom here so that you can see how great this is. And let's make a background image. So we'll go ahead, go back to our footage and let's just let it key. And you can see how much of that fine, fine detail we've retained. It's actually stunningly beautiful. And you can just continue to work with the footage in your normal workflow. Like I'm gonna bring up our PB color correction script. I'm gonna let it run. I'm gonna go ahead and look at my highlights here. I'm gonna crunch out that white level a little bit. Maybe bring up that black level a little bit. And now I can go in and start color correcting this image just as I would with anything else. So I can come in, I can take a little bit of that red out I can take a little bit out of the shadows. I can put in more green if I like, or since we're on a green screen, let's get rid of green. Let's put more blue. You just get a superior result, and it's all thanks to working with raw image data. And the greatest part of this entire workflow is the software to capture it and to convert it is all completely free. If you've already got After Effects, you've already got Premiere, you've already got a Canon camera, it will cost you absolutely nothing to attain much higher resolution images for your own work. So I think that's about where we're gonna leave this one. I hope you've enjoyed this week's tutorial and I hope you've learned something you can use in your work. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up on Twitter or Facebook, Google Plus, down in the comments, send me an email. And if you wanna keep learning, we have more great tutorials for you to use and other great assets for you to use in your work over at pixelbump.com. Thank you so much for watching. Go and create.